Hey, welcome back, No Problem Parents. It has been a hot minute. You know, in January of 2024, we did 31 episodes. That's right, we did one episode each day. February, I think we did about 17. And then the wheels fell off the train. So many of you reached out to do 90-minute strategy sessions, some one-on-one coaching sessions. And so some things had to give. And one of those things that had to kind of be put on the back burner was the podcast. I cannot believe, though... While not putting out an episode for nearly a month, you are all still listening. And I'm thinking it's because many of you had to get caught up because listening to one episode a day was just way too much for you. And so we are not going to be doing daily episodes. That's just a bit too much. However, I do have about 20 some episodes to get caught up. I have some guests who are patiently waiting to hear their episode being aired. And I'm going to get to those just as soon as I can. So we may do a couple episodes a week. We may do seven in a row. I don't know. We're just going to keep going. Some Make sure you're following the show. Click that little plus sign on whatever podcast app you're listening to so that you get the alerts when the episodes drop, when they are published. All right. Now, as far as that strategy session, this has become kind of a really popular item and it's one of my favorite things to do. So I want to promote it a little bit today. A 90 minute strategy session is going to give you value that goes way beyond the $499 price tag. You're going to get my guidance, personalized advice from me. I've been doing this parenting gig for over 30 years and I don't know everything. However, I do have some good stuff to share with you. I can help you figure out that one problem, that thing where you're just like, nothing is working. My kid is being disrespectful. They're isolating in their room. My spouse and I are at odds with each other. I'm too strict. He's too soft. So much of our parenting starts and begins with confidence in ourselves, belief in ourselves that we are capable of helping our kiddos solve any problem, any challenge that they are facing. And so I'm going to give you some practical solutions. I'm going to give you resources that are tailored to your specific unique situation. I have so many connections and so many options for getting to the root of the challenges and the problems in your home. And the cool thing about this 90 minute strategy session is you also get my DIY training, becoming a no problem parent training that is included in that. And if you decide you want to continue coaching with me, you can choose to apply your investment to the advanced parent coaching package or to the VIP coaching package. The session is virtual. You can log in from your home or from work without traveling or trying to find daycare or a caretaker to watch your kids. There's just absolutely no hassle and it's straightforward access to my guidance. I'm going to give you at least one immediate solution and I'm going to open the door to ongoing support. Kick fear, frustration, and your parenting problems to the curb. We can turn any problem into a no problem. Welcome to the No Problem Parenting Podcast, your go-to resource for navigating the ups and downs of parenthood with confidence. I'm your host, Jackie Finneman, a parenting advocate with over 30 years of experience counseling kids and coaching parents. Become a part of our No Problem Parenting community as each week we explore practical strategies, share heartfelt stories, and empower you to become the confident leader your kids crave you to be. Let's turn any parenting challenge or problem into a no problem together. Remember to subscribe and leave a review and learn more about our membership community and resources at noproblemparents.com. Today, I've got a powerhouse couple that's redefining the equation for success in math education. Tammy and Mark Goldberg are the underground math education innovators who've cracked the code to getting math right. Their journey unfolds at the forefront of Mathnasium Learning Centers worldwide. Today, not only are Tammy and Mark the masterminds behind the majority of Mathnasium's curriculum, but they're also operators of five Mathnasium Learning Centers in Manhattan and Brooklyn, plus one in their hometown of Doylestown, Pennsylvania. And as parents themselves, they've witnessed firsthand the negative academic ripples of the COVID pandemic. Fueled by their experiences with thousands of students and armed with a curriculum that has parents raving, Tammy and Mark feel an unwavering responsibility to share their collective wisdom. So get ready, parents, because what your kids actually need to succeed in math might just surprise you. We're going to learn all about that today. Welcome to the show, Mark and Tammy. Oh, thank you. It's so good to be here with you. Thanks, Jackie. Appreciate it. I'm so excited to talk about this subject because math is hard for a lot of kids, but it really doesn't have to be. 
And so I'm so curious to learn how you've cracked that math code and how you get kids to really be excited about math and what you're doing to change their ideas or their perceptions about math being hard. So if you think about, there certainly are kids out there that love math, right? There are. Absolutely. And, and so, well, why is it that those kids love math? I think generally they, they love math because they have great ways to think about it. There's an ease at which they can do math. And why do kids not like math? Well, they don't like it because it can be confusing. It can be stressful. And that forces them to kind of shy away from it. So our view of it was always, well, th there's something about the way that the, the kids that really love math, there's something about the way that they think that if we can capture that, and we can teach that to the kids that don't necessarily get that naturally, well, we can change the way that they relate to math. It doesn't have to be hard. They could do math with ease. And so I think the, the, the essence of what really is brilliant about the foundation that we built upon. So Mathnasium was first founded on the math side of it by Larry Martinek, who's a brilliant math educator who wrote kind of the initial foundation of the curriculum. And then we worked with Larry to bring that to the next level. And that is really what we uncovered, that what we do at Mathnasium is we teach all kids to think like those natural mathematical thinkers. How do you do that? What are some, I'm guessing the curriculum is vast. How sure. early do we start? Is Mathnasium uh, its own like our kids are already in school and taking a math curriculum. Is this in addition to that? How do we start with mathnasium and, and how young? We start around five, five years old, and then we go up through high school level math. Um, it's supplemental. So it works alongside any regular school curriculum that you're doing either via public school or private school or homeschool. If every parent could commit during that period of time, because look, ultimately, I think as parents, we don't want our children to have to have professional support in their schooling throughout the entirety of their schooling. And that ideally, if we could lay a foundation that would give them the ability to you know, grow from there and not need that support, that would be the ideal. That isn't always going to happen. And, and so obviously, as we said, we stated, we work with students of, you know, all the way up through high school. But yeah, if I think if a lot of parents made that choice in that third through fifth, sixth grade, really setting that strong foundation for when students then begin to encounter algebra, then everything else can, can almost take care of itself as time goes on. Now, of course, as you get later into high school and varying degrees of uh, expertise or, or proficiency from teachers, right? And maybe you encounter a teacher that you don't, that your child doesn't connect with and they might need some extra help. But that's different than lacking a foundation for success. Yeah, exactly. Like if you need a, a private tutor in high school for like your pre-calculus class uh, because of the content in pre-calculus, like fine. Um, but what we want to be able to do is make sure that you've got a strong foundation so that you don't need to go all the way back to multiplication facts and, and mm. fraction computation when you're in that pre-calculus class. But you don't want those things getting in your way, right. which for a lot of kids, believe it or not, that, that does get in their way. I mean, even like algebra one, like if we can build a strong foundation so that students can have real success in algebra one, and maybe their issues are just around like understanding what slope is versus like not being able to multiply fractions or not being able to multiply whole numbers at all. That's what we want to correct in that early in those early, grades. In those early years. That makes yeah. sense. And yeah. it, al it also makes sense that that third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade time, because that is when the curriculum changes and starts yeah. to get tougher. And I yes. think they're accessing a different part of their brain. Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's where multiplication, division, fractions, yeah, that's, when, that's when that all really starts to... Word problem. Yeah, word, right. Where that really takes... Uh, uh, takes a huge leap up in complexity. So definitely that, that period of time is, is critical. Also oh, from wish. a cognitive development standpoint too, where a lot of like, sometimes you'll see kids in, in first and second grade that maybe they're doing some 
math that, that just from a brain development standpoint, they're just not ready for. And, and that's okay. There's time. There's time to catch up. But that time horizon starts to kind of get smaller for when we have to really know stuff once we're kind of in, get, heading towards middle school. So that kind of heading towards middle school time is absolutely critical. That makes sense. So starting those earlier years is better, but then if you do have a child that is struggling, you know, in, in the high school years with calculus or, or stats class, you're still available to help at that point. Enrolling your child in a mathnasium program can be for a few months, can be for a full year, could be several years. How does that work? Well, if you do under six months, we're limited in, in what we can actually accomplish. Like it took a long time for these skill gaps to develop. So I would right. Say, if it's a child who's struggling, right. Or who's behind, child, which we you, get plenty of just kids do like now. three months to uh, accelerate or like try to get them from being born in school. Like that, that's right, or shape their thinking in a scenario. different way. Right. Like that's, I think that's it's fine. hard to make it solid progress unless there's a commitment to it, it, at least six months. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it in terms of, when someone's trying to improve their physical fitness, it's not all that different, right? If you, if you go to the gym for two months or three months, what are you really going to walk away with, right? You're not going to be that much different than when you walked in, but when you make that commitment for a longer period of time, well, good, that's when you can really make gains. And yeah, most mathnasiums sense. have memberships that are um, six months and 12 months that parents will continue on a month to month basis after their initial commitment of their either six months, another 12 month period of time. But like we said earlier, we don't want to keep your child in this program forever unless they want to, because they're, and a lot of them do because they are finding that now they're caught up to grade level and they just want to keep accelerating because they just love the environment because they've got tutor instructors who love math and they feel like they're just in this, this setting where they can go and feel celebrated and seen and taught uh, in a way that makes sense to them. Um, and they're, and we make sure that each assignment that they're given, they're completely ready for. So there's just like, they're just getting like a little micro challenge each time. Um, but not like we would, we would never, I mean, I think this is some of the genius that's built yeah. into the Mathnasium program, which, which we help to, to craft is that we never want to put an assignment in front of a child that that they are not ready for. And I think this is like the behind the scenes uh, element of like safety that we've created. Um, and we, we did that because we had an issue once with a, a child who we put a multi-digit multiplication page. Was it multiplication or yeah. division? Multiplication. multiplication page in front of, and she didn't have her multiplication facts mastered. This was in our first year. Before we had what, we eventually, you know, wrote the newer it curriculum. Yeah. 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 This was, this was definitely one of, one of the catalysts for us diving in and becoming writers. So um, it, um, she, she cried, she left the center and she cried to her mom that it was just hard. And, um, and the mom called and, just, and very calmly had a conversation yeah. with you. Right. And, mm -hmm. and what did she say? She said, yeah, Mark, I, I, I don't know what happened. Sarah always loves coming to Mathnasium, but she came out crying today and she said something about multiplication and it being too hard for her. And so I, I just wanted to bring it your, to your attention so you could you know, see what might have happened. And um, I, I thanked her, obviously, because we don't ever want a kid running out crying, right? right ever. Yeah. Um, and, and I looked in her binder and I saw that uh, there was this multi-digit multiplication page where she had repeated addition all over the margins of the page. So she would have like eight plus eight, 16, 16 plus eight, 24, 24, so on and so forth. And like, that was my moment where I was like, oh my God, mm -hmm. what did I do to this child? Yes. She wasn't ready. She wasn't ready for this. And, and now was that all my fault? No, it wasn't all my fault. It was a system breakdown. Mm -hmm. And that's when I was like, okay, so we don't have a, uh, a, a really great process for determining if our students have multiplication fact fluency. And then we need to make sure we've got a great way of remediating that if they need the help. And so that was the very beginning of our venture into writing curriculum because I never wanted that 
to happen again. And it hasn't. No, I mean, not in our, I wouldn't in say it does in our well, centers. I can't in speak everywhere, centers, but yeah. because certainly in order to, to make sure or do your best to make sure that doesn't happen, you have to do a great job of assessing the child. And mm-hmm. right now, that might not be the same across the board. So I can't sit here and claim that no child that walks through the doors of Mathnasium would ever walk out the door and had said that they did something they were, that they weren't capable of or ready for. But the, the curriculum we have in place and the processes that we built and that we employ in our centers, we're extremely careful to make sure that we have a strong understanding of not only what kids have mastered, right? What skills they've mastered, but how they're thinking what the, the, the processes that they use to solve the problem so that if, if they're doing it in a way that isn't really supporting them well, we're going to teach them a better way to do it, a much more efficient way, a more reliable way that they can, that they can call on not only for this specific task that they're going to do, but that they're then going to apply later. That is so great, you guys. So I wish teachers had the ability to go back and look at what has the child mastered? Are they ready for the next mm-hmm. chapter in their math book? The next, the, right. The next lesson that the is next coming. Lesson right. That's coming. Like, are they really ready? And unfortunately they, they often don't, but I love that you're just the heart in it and really seeing the student for where they're, they're at and who they are and wanting to make sure that you're doing no harm. And so I just really appreciate that. Also, I'm wondering, do you get a lot of students that are struggling and that's why they come to Mathnasium? Or are you getting more and more that are just like the parents are saying, nope, we want to get ahead of the game? It's it's a mix. a mix. Yeah, it's a real mix. Um, but I would say it's it's more struggling. It depend, but it depends on the community because there are some communities where there it is very much like the the kids that are the families that are drawn to Mathnasium are the ones that feel like they they're not getting challenged enough in school. So I'd say oh, it really okay. it really it really varies community by community. Well, uh, and I would I would think the more we get the word out about what Mathnasium is, like I was mentioning before we started to to um record, we have a Mathnasium in a town near me and um I didn't even notice it until mm-hmm. our son was like in 10th grade and at that point we had already had you know, some different supports for him. And so I think too, the awareness of what is Mathnasium and getting, getting that out there um, is key. But also I wonder about, do you get kiddos with uh, students with dyslexia or other learning disabilities? And are you able to help them? We, we do. And um, I would say as long as there are other team members that are supporting them, then we are the best place to go to for the math. I can just imagine that, um, especially since you're really figuring out where they're at in their understanding Mm -hmm. of the different concepts and things, because typically it's, you know, it's a myth that kiddos with dyslexia can't learn math. In fact, there's stealth dyslexia. Mm -hmm. So those, the stealth, Mm -hmm. stealth dyslexic kids are usually pretty super smart in math and science. And a lot of people Mm -hmm. aren't aware of that, but again, they may need to be taught in a little bit different way. You used to be so like, like you didn't want to know anyone's. No, I didn't want to know anybody's diagnoses or any of that because I didn't want you that. Believe, well, believe no, no, I it. didn't believe that that like, would I get teach anyone. Yeah, I didn't believe that that would get in their way to learn in the ways that we were teaching, and the because I saw we it. Had proof. We had proof of it. Yeah, I had living proof. I was doing this all the time. We would have students. That would come to us. I remember this one time a parent told us that that the child was diagnosed with a math learning disability. And and after probably about eight months of working with us, the the suddenly the diagnosis was gone and she didn't need she didn't have an IEP in school for math and all of that. It was like there's a lot to be said for a, a strong personal connection and a curriculum that is really matched to their exact needs for any child. Yeah, Yeah. I've had a couple of people reference um, dyslexia, for instance, not as a learning disability, but as a teaching disability. Hmm. Totally. Yeah. Yes. And exactly what you're saying right now. And I love that. In fact, Mark, when I used to do um, in home family counseling before I met with the family, I didn't want any other background information on anything. I just wanted to be able to hear them and acknowledge them and validate them and kind of like, where are we now? And what is your goal? 
you know, or what do you need? Mm-hmm. So I really yeah. respect exactly. and appreciate that from, from the both of you. Let's transition a bit here to how is mathnasium different than tutoring? Because I think people often kind of confuse it as it's a tutoring program, but it's really not. It's a blend, I'd say. Okay. So because there is a certain amount of schoolwork support that we do offer. So it's not that you you can't bring any of your homework or any of that into the center. It's just kind of at least how we do it in our centers. That's it's a limited amount of time. Everything starts with an assessment from that we do of the child's skills. We determine what they've mastered, what they haven't mastered from a certain grade level perspective. And so then can I say something? So, sure. so you're assuming that tutoring means working on the current homework, preparing, working on today's homework or preparing for tomorrow's test. Right. Right. I guess that. Right. Uh, thanks for pointing that out, Tammy, because that is what I'm yeah. referring to. It's not. So mathnasium is not there to for your child's current math assignments to like bring those to mathnasium and you're going to help them with their current math assignments. That's not what it is. That's we not, do a little bit. Yeah, that's that. not. But that's okay. not the primary focus generally. Okay. Gen- okay. Generally speaking, that doesn't mean that there's never a case where someone will spend an entire session on helping somebody prepare for the test the next day. The primary focus is on building up the foundation and and filling in any of the skill gaps that they may have missed along the way that are causing the problems with the current homework. Right. Okay. Or, or teaching them a different way of thinking about solving a problem that actually serves them better than how they had been taught previously. I'd say the big difference when it comes to hiring the private tutor compared to Mathnasium is that generally what the tutor has only to work with is what the child is bringing in to, to the, to the lesson or the, or the tutoring session. And there's generally not a structured approach to how do I deal with whatever underlying skill gaps could be getting in the way of this child being successful in, in the homework today. And so it's a lot of, oh, okay, it's, it's like a, there's a boat that's, that's leaking, and I've got to just keep putting patches on it in the moment. But am I actually going to help that child to master that underlying skill so that not only for tonight's homework or tomorrow's test can they do it, but can they do this two years from now, right? And that's when we know that something has truly been mastered because, by the way, they're going to need that two years from now because it's going to be embedded in some – more complex um, task that they have to do in math, right? Because it doesn't go away. Math is cumulative. So right. generally the, the private tutor doesn't have that type of structure. And that's very critical in elementary and middle school years. Like we were saying earlier, all building up to, let's say algebra one, which is kind of like the culmination of everything that we've been doing from elementary through early middle school, some kids start to get algebra in, in you know, seventh, eighth grade. The private tutor doesn't have those tools available. And then not, not only those tools, but okay, even if you identify the skill gap, how are you actually addressing it? How you address it matters. The, the way that we teach kids in efficient, reliable ways of thinking that is very well crafted, very well structured, generally the private tutor isn't going to have that container. I was a private tutor. I've done lots of private tutoring before Mathnasium and the kids that I did the best with were the ones that had a strong foundation and they just needed a little help with the concepts that they were learning in algebra or geometry or or above. The ones that were difficult were like the algebra one student who had severe gaps that, that I couldn't, I couldn't fix in a once a week, one-on-one private tutoring session. Like they right. needed a more comprehensive plan. Right. If they couldn't add and subtract integers effectively right. and they're trying to do algebra one, right. How much- yeah, they, that's exactly. a problem. Are you going to just pull worksheets, you know, off a computer or, or just start writing out problems for I- integers, right? It's not, it's not well structured. So ideally right. parents don't let your kid get into that position where they're in algebra one and they've got foundational gaps. That's where mathasium can come in. That's, that's what we, we want to spread the word on is that if you can get a solid foundation before algebra one, your, your child's going to be so much better off in algebra one right. through college math. Right. But then there's also the idea of, okay, let's say your child had some struggles in algebra one. Algebra is most likely not going away for them. And so that's where, if, hey, if your child's in a geometry class, there's no reason why you know you you should just abandon algebra. Go get some help on the on building up the algebra skills because algebra two is coming up next. 
you just yeah. need a more comprehensive program than what I could have provided or any private tutor could provide, especially in a once a week. Yes. Scenario. And well-structured, right? It's got to so, be well-structured. And so how is your curriculum, what you have all added to the mathnasium curriculum and what you've all developed, how is that different than maybe another math support? That's a great question. We could probably talk about that for hours. Um, well, I'll have to have you back. On. Like, <laughs> yeah. Give us the yeah. cliff notes. Oh. So there are two schools of thought, it seems, in math right now. There's like very dichotomous. The conservative way of teaching math through traditional like traditional standard algorithms. And then there's right. Math is memorization, formulas, the algorithms. We the way we were they taught math in the eighties, basically. Yeah. Um where and like it was wasn't perfect. There was a lot of like timed test well, there still are time tests, which are awful. Yeah. It's too much too much like, anxiety. Yeah producing I mean, you need newcom for that <laughs> yeah yeah right this is a good little segue for a better night's sleep less stress less anxiety try new calm new calm is an app you download it on your phone there are tracks to help you sleep better like deep sleep and there are tracks to help you focus focus is an essential technology for getting more done in less time you know our minds are often distracted with worry uncertainty anxiety to-do lists and feelings of overwhelm well, Focus puts you back in control so you can enjoy a quiet, decluttered mind. Focus significantly increases your mental clarity, analytical thinking, comprehension, energy, and inspiration. And yes, your kids and teens can benefit from Focus. Listening to the beautifully composed music and sound design, you're quickly going to begin to focus as the new calm underlying physics narrows your focus and attention. You'll lose sense of time as your focus increases and your thinking becomes more intentional. It can be used anytime you're awake. People use focus while working, studying, catching up on emails, thinking, walking, reading, doing household chores, or anytime you want to feel focused and get more done in less time. We have a link in the show notes. Get your seven-day free trial at newcalm, N-U-C-A-L-M dot com, and be sure to enter coupon code no problem for 15% off your monthly subscription. We're big yeah, fans. We, we're all big fans of Newcalm, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. So 80, we'll call it 80s math, traditional math, where it's like you've got to learn the standard algorithms, meaning like carrying and, and borrowing and the long division algorithm. And the, the criticism against all of that was that it wasn't transparent enough and why we're doing the things like it's just following just revolving. telling you what to do here are the rules go do it right, right? Yeah. or even things like okay subtracting subtracting a negative is a positive and you just tell them the rule and that's it right there's no helping the child to understand why that's the case it's just that's the rule go do it so that and was like again, the 80s math. so here i'm going to put in another little disclaimer about dyslexia you can't just tell a kid with dyslexia here's what you do they are often engineers. Mm -hmm. Kids with dyslexia are often have that entrepreneurial or engineer in their blood. And so they need to know why. Why am I doing it? Mm -hmm. And that's a great question. And we should all be asking that. Right. Right. There's yes. genius in that. Yes. Like, why, and I remember, I remember in 80s math, I was kind of like, yeah, why? Why do I have to do that? Mm -hmm. Why do I have to carry and bring down and all that? Why does that make sense? Like that kind of drove me a little crazy. So I get the complaint. The problem is the math education world swung way in the opposite direction yes. where it's like complete mm -hmm. rejection of standard algorithms and you, you can come up with your own way of doing it. Yeah. Let's and explore eight ways of doing this and then, okay, how do you feel about it? What, which way it works best for you and nothing gets mastered. So what happens is they come, students come to us and we give them an assessment and there's like, let's say a four digit plus a four digit number and they blank. They have no mastery of any one technique that could work. Right. Or that the child and the reverse of that, the child that's, let's say in a traditional program where they've memorized their multiplication facts, like, but, you know, just by rote memorization and okay, you, you ask them, okay, how much is 12 times 12? And they tell you, oh, 144. And you ask them, well, what's 12 times 13? And they just say, I didn't learn that one. They have no, there's nothing they can do. Um, or like, I love this one, 101 minus 99. And the kids do it with an algorithm. Right, where, where they line up the numbers. Minus 99, they don't just think how far is it from 99 to 101. So mm -hmm. there's problems on both ends. What Mathnasium does is we take the best of both, we packaged it up, 
We make sure that we, the assessment makes knows exactly how the child thinks about all of these different topics, and then we put a program together that is perfectly aligned for what they need, given that we've taken the best of both. They're gonna learn the number sense and mental math techniques. They're going to also learn how to use the standard algorithms. We're gonna bring transparency to the standard algorithms. It's like meeting in the middle of these two polar opposite worlds and, and finding the, the best of both and delivering it in an elegant, comfortable way to each child so that they are able to digest and move on to the next challenge. And apply, yeah, and, and apply going forward. And, and I think th there definitely has been an emphasis in math education on developing number sense, which is great, right? That's great, and that's a big part of what we do. And, and what, what constitutes number sense? It's like this kind of nebulous thing. It's like understanding the relationship between numbers and, okay, Part of that is having great mental math techniques, great mental math skills, but it's also being able to look at a set of circumstances that you're given and say, what tools do I have to get this efficiently and reliably? And if what that means is I'm going to use the standard algorithm for multiplication or for division or for addition, so on and so forth, that's, that's exhibiting good number sense. When you look at, hey, I got four four-digit numbers that I'm gonna, I have to add. The, the, the best way for me to get there efficiently and reliably, uh, uh, the, the correct answer is to use the standard algorithm. Whereas, hey, if I've got two two-digit numbers staring in front of me, or let's say it's something like, oh, I have to, I have to double 17. Okay, well, do, is it really that efficient for me to write that down? And then, oh, I got a four and carry the one. This? No, I can double 17 by doubling 10 and double seven mm -hmm. and putting it together to make 34, right? 20. And 14 to make 34. So we're teaching kids to see math in that way. So not only – and then teaching them those ways of thinking, but then also helping them to understand, like surveying the situation and having that recognition, oh, what tool do I pull from my tool belt right now? So the key is you guys figure out with the kid which way is – most beneficial to them or that they're going to catch on? I mean, so in that case, we would expose kids to both ways of doing it. So let's say like the two digit plus a two digit with carrying, they should be, they should learn how to do that. And they should also learn the two digit plus a two digit mentally. Yes. And we would, and we would teach it that way. And then that child's going to gravitate to one or the other, right. but ideally they would be able to pull out whichever tool that they need in whatever situation. Like we just want to equip them well with here, here are the most efficient ways that work because right. there's a ton of other, yeah, there's other ways of doing it ways that they're teaching yeah. kids in school now, but like a lot of that is like, it's good mind game or exercise to do. Yeah. So like yeah. we've, we've figured out the ones that are actually going to get you the most efficient answer quickly. Mm -hmm. Right. This gets us away from having to memorize the, you know, the, those facts, but we can actually commit them to memory by having a, a, a thought process that we do, you know, repeatedly over and over again for a period of time until, okay, now I just know it. It's in my memory. I don't have to keep thinking about it that way. But yeah. yet the mastery of the facts is critically important. Right? This is, this is an area we could have a whole. Yeah, exactly. I, anytime, any chance I get to have people on the show that talk about ways that we can change the conversations that step three of no problem parenting with our kids and really actually step one is seeking first to understand, um, getting to the root of the problem. You guys are at Mathnasium. Not only have you developed a curriculum that is helping kids who are struggling. I mean, you've developed this so that we don't even have to get to the point where our kids are struggling. We can we can get them started right away and prevent so many behavioral and emotional challenges that our kids go through. So I'm really grateful that you guys took the time to be with me today. What's the best way that a family can find out more about Mathnasium? The, the best thing would be to just go to mathnasium.com and people can search in their local community and put in your zip code and, and find a, a local Mathnasium Learning Center. And you, you'll be able to experience most likely, if you have a child that's in you know, kindergarten through probably at least seventh grade, you get to experience some of the work that, that we've done uh, at, at the franchise level. You don't have to do this alone. There are some amazing experts out there. 
Um, getting a, a third party look at your child's math skills is really, really critical right now, especially in the post COVID world. Yeah. Most mathnasium centers offer a free assessment. And so uh, it's a, it's a great way to, to experience what mathnasium has to offer with, with no obligation, you know, no financial obligation. So I would highly encourage anyone uh, listening to this, that if you're cu even curious about it, uh, you know, contact your local center and, and have that free assessment. And, and from there, you can get a really good sense of whether or not you know, it's a good fit for your family. I love it. Thanks so much, you guys, for helping us turn those math problems into no problem. Thanks for being with me today. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Jackie. Hey, thanks for tuning in today, parents. Remember, we can turn any problem into a no problem. We can create connection and relationship. So come on board. Join our parenting community. Go to noproblemparents.com to get started today.